Good morning from Glasgow and I'm at the entrance to the third oldest subway in the world. It's Glasgow subway and we're going to go and have a look and see what it's like. So why don't you come with me and I'll catch you on the train. Right, so the station I chose to start my journey on was Buchanan Street, which had this fantastic travelator, which, unlike some destinations I could mention, works just perfectly, conveying me under the streets of Glasgow city centre's main shopping area. Now, as I said, it was the third underground railway system to open in 1896, but it came after London and Budapest, if you're interested. And it's basically a six and a half mile large circular loop of two four foot narrow gauge tracks. Now Buchanan Street is one of 15 stations on the line and it's pretty much on the eastern edge of the loop which runs both north and south of the River Clyde. Morning. Do I use this um, thing at the, at the gate? It's just a single ticket you get, so you need to go to the window every time you travel. All right, cool. Sure. Thank you very much. You. Cheers. Okay, so, um, well, in or out, I guess. That worked okay. Let's try the outer. Which one's more? The inner as well? Oh, two minutes. Doesn't really matter, does it? Right. Okay, now I'm not sure at this stage whether the, I should have researched this one, whether the outer goes clockwise or anti-clockwise. Yeah, so what I did was buy a one-day day-tripper ticket which cost me £13.10 pence, and allowed me to travel not just on the subway but also regular train and bus routes plus a couple of ferries in the Strathclyde region. As the lady said, every time I entered the station I had to show the card and then they printed off an individual ticket so I could get through the gates. So on boarding the train, the first thing you notice is how small the carriages are. Now it's quiet at the moment for obvious reasons, but I would imagine they can get pretty cramped in rush hour during normal times. And just to confirm, as you can see here, the outer line, colour coded orange, does travel clockwise, whilst the inner line travels anti clockwise.
Well, I decided to um, leave the subway at a station called Kelvin Hall, which had an island platform, interestingly enough, because I know there are not many of those uh, still around, and certainly not on the London Underground, um, primarily because of safety concerns. But I like it so far, it's quite quirky. It's very small, and I think it's actually, um, well, the trains are actually smaller than those on the deep uh, underground lines in London, such as the Northern Line. And there certainly isn't a lot of headroom on the trains themselves, but very good. And the, the tunnels are quite small as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip back down. You can just see the subway sign there. So like I said, unless you know it's there, um, I'm not sure if you'd, if you'd really figure out where, where you were going or where you could catch it from. But yeah, I'm going to head back down in there and um, have another ride on it. Why not? So I'll see you later. The tunnel diameter is 11 feet or 3.35 metres, which is indeed smaller than the deep level lines of the London Underground. Now you can really appreciate how small they are when you're right up close to them, as you can see here. Okay guys, well I've just come out of the subway at Kelvin Bridge. Well there's a fantastic bridge just behind me there. Uh, some great cast iron railings. I'm going to check that out in a minute. And obviously the um, bridge itself carries tra traffic over the river Kelvin, which you would expect. Um, and the Kelvin Bridge itself is also the deepest of the subway stations. Um, but even then, it's only a couple of flights of stairs and a small escalator ride to the surface. So it's not that deep. But um, yeah, I'm going to have a little look around. And um, then I'm going to nip back on the outer circle and carry on my journey. So I'll catch you in a bit. As you can see here, Strathclyde Partnership for Transport have provided escalator access up to the bridge, which is obviously a massive help, but it doesn't really go with its surroundings very well. But what do you think? Uh, please let me know in the comments below. A look at this impressive coat of arms on the side of the span here. And it's also good to know that it's been left alone by the graffiti beneath it. Now you can get a better view of the escalator access from up here, but like I said, for me, it doesn't really fit in with its historic surroundings very well. Well, you would assume that because the subway station is called Kelvin Bridge, that this would be the name of the bridge, but it is in fact just a common name for what is officially the Great Western Bridge. The cast iron bridge was completed in 1891 and is actually now a Grade A listed building. I had a wander down the steps on the other side as there was something I wanted to have a closer look at over here. And so I walked down the eastern side of the river a bit, and uh, please let me know if I'm correct or not here, but what I think I was looking at was the site of the old Kelvin Bridge railway station. Do you see the old tunnels here? Well, I'd love to know a bit more about this, if anybody can help. Anyway, it was time to get back underground, and I found myself on um, the island platform again, waiting for a train, now uh, this time back on the outer circle line. The trains operated on both lines are the same length and consist of a power car, trailer car and one in the middle. And they've been in service now for around 40 years I believe and you can really get an idea of how small they are when they come into the station like this. But I thought the trains in general were really well kept, clean and bright on the outside. Much to do with the colour scheme I think. 
uh, which also gives it a modern appearance, which uh, in itself is quickly diminished uh, by the time you step on board. And notice how quiet it stays. In normal times, the capacity of these trains would be 112 seats and 165 standing. And like I said before, I can imagine overcrowding can be a problem during busy periods. Again, if you've got any experience of this, please let me know in the comments below. And my pet hate these days, as you may have gathered, is the amount of signs plastered everywhere telling you not to do this or that. But I think where there is signage on these trains, it is subtle and quite clear, without the need to go completely over the top. Because I think by now everybody should know how to behave during these crazy times, to be honest. It was getting late in the day now, and I was nearing the end of my time on the Glasgow subway. I think I'd managed to pass through every station at least once, and alight at several of them too. Obviously it's a lot less complex than most subway systems, and you can't really go far wrong if you get on either line, then sooner or later you're going to arrive at the station you want. It was time for me to take one last short escalator ride to the surface. I exited at St Enox, which was pretty much where I started from earlier on in the day. Okay guys, and that was the Glasgow subway. I'm at St Enoch's and incidentally that building behind me is the old headquarters of the Glasgow subway. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you've got any comments um, regarding the history of the line, anything really, I'd be really useful if you could share them with me. And until next time, thanks for watching and cheers for now.